Did you know you can use your stand mixer for much more than just baking? We have made numerous accessory attachments available so that you can use your mixer for many food preparation techniques. You can purchase these attachments by visiting fine retailers near you or go to the Cuisinart website at Cuisinart.com. The attachments are powered by three outlets on your stand mixer. The first one in the very front under the Cuisinart name is the low speed outlet. It is used either with the pasta maker attachment or the meat grinder. You can open the cover two different ways. One way is by placing your thumb under the groove at the very far right and pulling the cover back. You can also open it by pulling the silver lever at the very front of the mixer and the cover will just pop open. The other two outlets, mid-speed and high-speed, are located under the lid of the mixer head. Just lift the lid. The hinge is in the back. You can remove the mixer head cover by removing it from the hinge. You can either use the outlets by removing the lid entirely or just pushing it back so it rests on the hinge. The mid-speed power outlet is used with the citrus juicer attachment. The high-speed power outlet is used with the food processor attachment along with the blender attachment. Now I'd like to show you what all the different attachments can do for you. Here is your meat grinder attachment. Use it to make fresh ground meat that can be used for homemade meatloaf or savory sausage links made with ingredients of your choosing. Let's review the parts. This is the grinder body. Feed screw, cutter, ring nut, wrench, tray, pusher with lid, sausage making ring, large and small sausage nozzles, and the fine, medium, and coarse grinding plates. To assemble, insert the feed screw, long straight metal side first, into the front end of the grinder body. Place the cutter blade with the blade side out over the square base of the stem on the feed screw. Make sure the cutter is securely in place. Take one of the grinding plates and place it on the feed screw stem with the small grinding plate notch over the pin on the grinder body. Fit the ring nut over the grinding plate and turn it clockwise until it is loosely secured to the body. Open the low speed power outlet cover by pulling the lever. Pull the slow speed outlet cover release lever again while mounting the meat grinder to the outlet. Move the meat grinder in both directions until it locks into place. Now, tighten the ring nut by turning it clockwise. Place the tray on top of the grinder and put a mixing bowl under it to catch the ground meat. Put the stand mixer on speed 5. And then drop the meat into the grinder one piece at a time. Use medium pressure. Do not push hard. Now I'm going to show you how to use your ground meat to make sausage links. To the meat, we added flavoring ingredients such as onion, apples, and sage. The complete recipe is in the booklet. Soak the casing for 30 minutes. Insert the feed screw into the front end of the grinder body. Place the sausage making ring over the square base of the stem on the feed screw with the notch over the pin on the grinder body. Insert the sausage nozzle onto the meat grinder and screw the ring nut on it so that it is secure. Pull the casing over the entire length of the nozzle, leaving two inches hanging over the end. Pull the slow speed outlet cover release lever again and insert the meat grinder into the outlet in the upright position. Move the meat grinder both ways until it locks into place. Put the tray on top. Turn the stand mixer to speed 5 and gently use the pusher to push the food through. As the casing fills, slowly push it off the nozzle. Create your links by stopping the stand mixer and twisting the casing to secure it. Remember, do not put any of the metal parts into the dishwasher. Tray, pusher, and wrench are all top rack dishwasher safe. Be sure to wipe the grinding plates with a little vegetable oil and wrap each in greaseproof paper. This will prevent them from discoloring and rusting. To store the sausage attachments and grinding plates, 
Put them inside the pusher and attach the lid. Here's one of my favorite attachments, the pasta maker. Let's review the parts. They are the body, the feed tube, feed screw, ring nut, wrench, cleaning tool, measuring cup, and the six different pasta plates make a variety of shapes including spaghetti, macaroni, rigatoni, fettuccine, lasagna, and large macaroni. To assemble the attachment, insert the feed screw long metal end first into the front end of the pasta attachment body. Fit one of the pasta plates on top of the feed screw. Make sure that the notches on the bottom of the pasta plate slide securely onto the two pins on the front end of the body. Next, screw on the ring nut. To switch plates, first remove the ring nut and the current pasta plate. Then, reassemble as before. Now, open the slow speed outlet cover. Pull on the slow speed outlet lever and insert the pasta maker so it's facing you. Turn the stand mixer to speed 4. Now, here we have some pasta dough that was made by using the stand mixer. The recipe is in the booklet. Drop the small pieces of dough into the feed tube, one at a time. Make sure the pieces are the size of a grape. Gently push the dough into the feed tube, a piece at a time. If necessary, push the dough further down the feed tube using the handle of the wrench. Cut your pasta when it reaches the desired length. Remove the ring nut manually or with the wrench if it's fastened too tightly. Remove the pasta plate and feed screw. Allow the dough to dry before removing it from the plates with the cleaning tool. You can also put the parts in the freezer, take them out, and tap them so the dough is released. One thing I want to mention, never put your ring nut in the dishwasher. Always wash it by hand. All the rest of the parts are top rack dishwasher safe. If you like freshly squeezed juices, try using the citrus juicer attachment. Here are your parts. Juicing cone, sieve, juicer container with pour spout, connector with washer. Let me show you how to assemble it. Open the top cover of your stand mixer. Use the base of the juicing cone to unscrew the mid-speed power outlet plug. Set it aside. Screw the connector with the washer attachment to the mid-speed power outlet. Lower the juicer container onto the connector and turn it clockwise until it drops into place. Insert the sieve. Be sure the pour spout is seated properly. Insert the juicing cone. Turn it clockwise until it drops into place. Turn your stand mixer to the recommended speed. For lemons and limes, use speed 8 to 10. For oranges, 6 to 8. For grapefruits, also 6 to 8. Press on. Then press each fruit half one at a time using medium firm pressure to juice them. After serving, refit the juicer bowl onto the connector. Be aware that sometimes the connector may tighten. So to remove and loosen it easily, just turn the bowl counterclockwise. This blender attachment is great for making soups, dressings, smoothies, anything you want to blend. Here are your parts. The cover, two ounce measure pour lid, 40 ounce glass carafe, ceiling ring, blade assembly, and the collar. Wash your blender parts before using. Make sure the sealing ring is in place on the blade assembly. 
Fit the blade assembly inside the collar. Place the jar over the blade assembly and turn clockwise until it fits firmly in place. Place the pour lid into the cover. Open the cover of your stand mixer. Attach the blender to the high speed power outlet by matching the marked line on the collar to the marked line on the stand mixer and turn the collar clockwise until it's firmly in place. Now I'm going to show you how to make a breakfast banana smoothie. We're adding milk, yogurt, a frozen banana, fresh strawberries, frozen fruit, and some protein powder. Place the cover on. Turn the stand mixer on speed 12 and follow your recipe for the amount of time you need to blend. In this case, we blend our smoothie for about 35 to 45 seconds. Doesn't that look great? To clean and maintain your blender attachment, remove it from the stand mixer before cleaning it. The blade assembly, collar, and sealing ring should be washed with hot soapy water. The jar, pour lid, and cover can go on the top rack of your dishwasher. When it comes to chopping onions and other tedious food preparation tasks, it's always great to have a machine do the work for you. And that's exactly what happens with the stand mixer's food processor attachment. The parts of your food processor attachment are the food pusher, the stainless steel reversible slicing and shredding disc, the work bowl cover with feed tube, the work bowl, the stainless steel chopping blade, adapter stem, and gear collar. Take the work bowl handle in one hand and the gear collar in another. Twist the work bowl clockwise onto the collar. To use the chopping blade, just place it in the bowl. Always hold the chopping blade by the hub. To use the reversible slicing and shredding disc, place the adapter stem in the bowl and put the disc on the top. Always hold the reversible disc by the outer rims only. Put the cover on the work bowl by turning it clockwise until it fits into place. The food pusher fits in the feed tube with the more rounded side towards the outside of the bowl. Open the cover on the stand mixer and connect the gear collar of your food processor attachment onto the outlet by matching the marked line on the collar to the marked line on the stand mixer and turn the collar clockwise until it's firmly in place. To operate, just use speed 8 and press the on button to chop or grind. Your food processor attachment is great for chopping and mincing items like parsley, garlic, and onions. It easily slices vegetables like cucumbers and carrots. You can even shred cheese. Use the pusher to feed the food through the tube. Before you remove your attachments, make sure the stand mixer is off and the blade or disc has stopped spinning. And never immerse the collar in water. Just wipe it clean with a damp cloth. All of the other parts are top shelf dishwasher safe.